Hello, welcome to this video in which I will introduce the concept of the artificial gravity connector. The artificial gravity connector, or AGC in short, is meant to be launched on a SpaceX Starship cargo version. This cargo version has an estimated cargo capacity of 150 metric tons when fully optimized, according to Elon's estimations mentioned on Twitter. We at SpaceX Vision believe that this artificial gravity concept could be a suitable approach for SpaceX to dip their toes into the application of artificial gravity to their Starship fleet for the first time. In order to study the effects of artificial gravity on people, and other organisms like animals and plant life to set their sight on long-term space colonization. Once Starship cargo has reached a stable orbit, it opens its cargo bay door to release the artificial gravity connector. Starship looks a bit like a space whale, a big metal space whale. Please remember, that what you see is just a visual conceptualization of the artificial gravity connector. If it were to be built in real life, it would probably look much different, so this form of it, only functions to get the main concept across, so there is no need to technically analyze the AGC spacecraft in an in-depth manner. However, we did our best, with the time we had, to make the concept look plausible in a technical sense, you know, not to kick the bucket of non-realistic near-term technologies. So our easily technologically outraged viewers would not cry to their mommy like little offended toddlers. So the first order of the day, for our artificial gravity connector, after being abandoned by mama whale, is to juice up on some of that sweet solar energy. And what better way to soak up those sun rays than with a giant foldable solar array that measures more than 50 meters long and has a combined output of 300 kilowatt hours. If these solar arrays look familiar, you might have seen them in my SLSS video or the single launch space station concept. If you haven't, there is a link in the description below in case you are interested. The idea behind these solar panels is that they are able to provide power to the AGC systems as well as the starships which are going to function as habitats. The energy generation to the weight of the solar panels is supposed to be less than 1 kilogram a kilowatt hour. These large lightweight solar arrays also allow the artificial gravity connector to be equipped with efficient iron engines for the purpose of long duration altitude raising or to accelerate the AGC over long periods of time in deep space. Iron engines are space engines that propel gas at extremely high velocities by using electrically powered magnets. These engines can be up to 20 times more efficient than chemical rocket engines, allowing for huge savings in fuel usage. After the AGC with its solar panels extended, made itself all snug in its desired orbit. It is time for Starship crew to steal the show. How it would steal the show, you're asking? Well, by roaring heavily on the launch pad and punching holes in the clouds, all while its occupants are fearfully expecting the whole thing to blow up since rockets do that sometimes. After surviving the launches, two Starships rendezvous with the artificial gravity connector. You'll notice these spacecraft are all rather close to each other. This is not a problem, since in space there are no external factors that can move the spacecraft besides some astronaut rookies pressing the wrong buttons. But this is a science mission, so no crazy YouTube influencers on board this time. Once the two crewed starship have maneuvered themselves into the proper position, the AGC starts rotating the gravity arms into the proper position, after which it starts extending them like a telescoping mechanism. The telescoping gravity arms can extend almost 70 meters from the center point of rotation of the artificial gravity connector. As you can see, the starships have a little extra thingy on its hull, so it can be connected to the arms. Some of you guys might think, what if the weight of the starships is different, 
would that not create a wobble during the rotation? Well for that there is a 5 metric tons weight equalizer mechanism within the extending arms just for that purpose. This would be fluid based so that it can easily redistribute weight from one part of the rotating shafts to another. The electricity for the life support system for the starship habitats would be provided by the solar arrays of the artificial gravity connector. The power would be transmitted wirelessly from the stationary part of the AGC to the rotating part. The starships would not have solar panels since this would not work well when they start spinning since it would not have constant sunlight. So now, the AGC gravity arms will start to spin, causing the artificial gravity inside the starship to increase when the spinning starts to increase in speed. The idea is that the rotating part would spin with a rotational speed of around 2 to 2.5 rotations per minute. This would enable a level of artificial gravity comparable to that of Mars. After reading many comments on our previous artificial gravity concept, which was the single launch artificial gravity station or slags, which we will link to in the description below we realized there are still some misconceptions regarding this type of centrifugal artificial gravity among space enthusiasts. So we decided not to explain the fundamentals of centrifugal artificial gravity to you, but let someone else do it who is a well-known and smart YouTuber. His name is none other than Scott Manley, who recently created a video explaining the history of centrifugal gravity experimentation in different space programs well worth the watch. For our own centrifugal artificial gravity research for different spacecraft and space station concepts, we use a simple but elegant online tool to calculate the strength of the centrifugal artificial gravity depending on the rotational speed and the length from the center of rotation to the habitat. On this site, you can easily input the radius of your gravity station with the desired rotation per minute after which it shows you exactly the amount of gravity you would get. For our station, a rotation of 2 or 2.5 per minute would be ideal. Having a higher rotation rate might cause to many adjustment problems for the astronauts. I suppose the ideal radius for a gravity station would be 200, for which you would get almost the same gravity as on Earth. Scroll down and you can find more detailed explanations and references that would help you along with your artificial gravity studies. One other thing that might have been nagging you during this concept presentation is the fact that the solar panels stay stationary while the arm rotates. Sounds strange at first glance. However, this can be rather easily achieved by equipping the artificial gravity connector with a counterweight that rotates in the opposite direction of the gravity arms with the starships. Of course, because I am sometimes a bit of a retard, I made the mistake of having the counterweight rotate in the same direction. So please just imagine it rotating in the other direction to keep the illusion alive. If you don't, this universe will branch a new timeline, and you'll become a literal potato variant, on a couch, or something. It also spins much faster, to compensate for the weight difference with the starships. Even with the two starships attached, and rotating, creating artificial gravity, finally enabling astronauts to have a comfortable shower, safe time, not chasing their poop all around starship, and of course, do science thingies, and prevent bone loss. The three iron engines can still fire up, for the whole system to engage in orbit-raising maneuvers or just to give the astronauts a pretty blue light to look at. It would also be easy to stop the rotation altogether by decreasing the speed of the gravity arms and counterweight simultaneously, allowing resupplying, crew change or decoupling. One could argue, perhaps Starship is not the best type of rotating habitat for this purpose, due to its mass and overall weight distribution. You would be right, if you thought this. Probably the lunar starship variant, 
would be more suited for this purpose since it has less mass due to the lack of a heat shield and wings. Besides these considerations, the lunar starship also has a more appropriate internal layout distribution than the regular starship. This is because, for a moon landing, the astronauts would be using the same surfaces as the floors, as they would, attached to the artificial gravity connector. With the lunar starship, the whole system would be lighter, making also the iron engines more effective. One could think of any type of habitat which could be attached to the gravity arms. Such a gravity station could also be brought to lunar orbit with the help of a starship tanker variant. The reason why anyone would want to do that though is a bit of a stretch I believe, but it does make for some pretty animation. I mean, look at it go, going round and round, around a round grey ball. We believe, such a concept has potential. It would enable humanity to finally experiment with centrifugal artificial gravity in space. To study its effects on the human body, and potentially enabling crude deep space missions, in the further reaches of our solar system, such as Jupiter, Saturn and their respective moons. Also, the artificial gravity, could be used to grow fresh produce in space, to feed the astronauts, and keep their moral high on long journeys. Such a system, could also be implemented on journeys to Mars. To help colonists already adjust, to the Martian gravity, before even arriving on Mars. If you would like to see an animation of such a Mars journey, please mention it in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this new concept of ours. We are planning many more different space concepts in the near future. So if you are eager to see more concepts, feel free to like this video and write some ideas, constructive criticism, or kind words in the comments. I would also like to thank my Patreons who support my channel. If you are a YouTube content creator, check out my Patreon page for the possible use of my animations in your videos. Thanks for watching.